Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, we need to be taking a little bit of a look at the top 20 cards from Rebel Clash. Now, Rebel Clash comes out today, and I would have got my top 20 list up a couple of days ago, except for the whole rotation thing happened, which, shall we say, was mildly distracting. But we're back here. I've got a top 20 list. I feel very, very good about the top three. And then after that, I feel good about the list. Not sure I feel too great about the order. Feel free to mess it around. Honorable mention before we get going here to Phalanx. I love Phalanx. Phalanx makes me happy. Phalanx is my favorite pair of cards from the set. We got Phalanx V that says all of your Phalanx take 20 less from attacks. Applies to both V and non-V and yes, it stacks. And then you got Phalanx that for just a twin energy. Yeah, that's coming back in a minute. Does 30 damage for each of your bench Phalanx. Yes, that includes V. And when you've got a Pokemon that gives up one prize and uses one energy attachment, but is hitting 150 damage while taking 80 less from attacks, you've got my attention. But starting the list properly, at number 20, we've got Training Court. Training Court is a lovely new stadium that says that each player may, during their turn, pick up a basic energy from their discard pile. It's half a Mount Coronet, except it's not just limited to Metal Decks, which makes me pretty gosh darned happy. It's a good card that a bunch of decks are going to want to play to get their energy back. In at number 19, and this might be a little bit too low, but like I've said, the order is very difficult to figure out here. We've got Nine Tails V. Nine Tails V basically should go as a one-of in almost every deck that is a fire deck, at least, moving forward. Nine Tails for free energy will just copy one of your active Pokemon's attacks. It can be a GX attack, though remember... If you're going to copy their GX attack, you have to copy the whole thing, including it's your only GX attack for the turn. Coming in at number 18, we've got Appleton. Now, gusting is always good, which is why this goes on the list. Appleton is not the best gusting we've seen, which is why it's quite far down the list. It's got the ability Delicious Aroma that says once during your turn, you may flip a coin. And if heads, you switch one of your opponent's benched basic Pokemon with their active. It gives you a free Pokemon catcher every turn, which is awesome. But the problem is it's only a Pokemon catcher for basic Pokemon, which does make it significantly less good. In at number 17, we've got Galarian Weezing. Now, I'm not a fan of the attack on Galarian Weezing. One Darkness Energy and Poison, though it is four damage counters between turns rather than the usual one. And you can combine this with Toxicroak to add two damage counters between turns per Toxicroak. But it's really the ability here. It turns off your opponent's abilities. It's not phenomenal. We've seen Pokemon like Slacking last format, which had the same ability and never saw any play. But single energy attack, it's only a stage one. There is a lot of potential here. And it's like the best ability lock we've got. What else are you going to play instead? There we go. In at number 16, we've got Turf Field Stadium. This is a new stadium that just once during your turn lets you search for a grass Pokemon. As long as it's an evolved grass Pokemon. And it really is as simple as that, but you know what? That's good. It is a good effect. It's a powerful effect. It's a useful effect. Grass decks are going to want to play this. It's going to be a staple in every grass deck. It is a shame it's coming along right as Netball rotates out. That gets your basic grass Pokemon. But make no mistake about it, this is a very, very nice card that grass decks are going to love. In at number 15, we've got Inteleon V and Inteleon V Max. Now, this has seen a bit of play, a bit of love, a bit of success over in Japan. People are not necessarily taking it that seriously as a phenomenal card. 
coming out over here. But make no mistake about it, there is an awful lot of potential. Now, there's actually two attacks here, and we kind of like both of them. For a single energy, you get to do 60 damage and put an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon into their hand. Do feel free to combine that with things like Team Yell Grunt and Crushing Hammer to make it even more fun. But then if you want to go and add a second energy, and I think that might be a rather nice idea, and a third energy, then you do 160 to the active and 60 to one of your opponent's bench. Do please remember that we do have Frostmoth to accelerate the energy, so it's not that difficult to pay it, and you've got the makings of a very good deck here. In at number 14, we've got Burning Scarf. It's a lovely new tool that if attached to a fire Pokemon, and that fire Pokemon is damaged from an attack, you burn the attacking Pokemon. Which means they immediately take 2 damage after their turn, and then flip a coin, and if Tails, they then take 2 damage after your turn, and so on and so forth. Slightly upsetting that this is coming out as well as Volcano Park is rotating. It stops people flipping heads to get out of burn, but I think this is going to be one that fire decks are really loving. In at number 13, we've got Bolton V. Now, Bolton V... It's got quite a nice first attack. One lightning energy, search for two lightning energy, and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. But far better here is the attack for two energy that does 10 damage base, plus 30 more for each lightning energy attached to all of your Pokemon. You can play it as its own deck and just try and get as much energy out as you like. Or you can play it in a Pikachu and Zekrom deck and then as soon as there's enough energy on the field, you get to do huge damage and life is good. Bolton's got legs. Literally and metaphorically. In at number 12, I'm popping together Sonya and Milo. As I like to call them, they are the good new draw supporters. Sorry, Dan. Sonya comes along and lets you search for two basic Pokemon or two basic energy. And on the one hand, this kind of offends me because it's just an objectively worse Roseanne's Research. Like, Roseanne's Research gets you two in any combination of basic Pokemon and basic energy, whereas Sonya just gets you two of either. It's annoying. It's not fair. It's just a worse card. But you know what? We don't have Roseanne's Research at the moment. Roseanne's Research is gone which leaves this as our best option, so I'll take it. As for Milo, you discard two cards from your hand and draw two for each card discarded in this way. In decks where you really want to discard stuff, whether it's energy in a Malamar-style deck or Pokemon in a Zoroark-style deck, or whatever it might be, this has got your back while drawing a whole bunch of cards. Sounds pretty good to me. In at number 11, we've got Double V. Now, Double V, it's a tech Pokemon. It, it's nothing more than that. It is a tech. It is a card that fits into decks. But you know what? It's colorless energy. It fits into, like, any deck. It's got a nice ability that lets it take 30 less damage from attacks. Yay! But for free energy, it's all colorless, so you can pop it in whatever deck you like. 120 base plus 30 more for each prize card your opponent's taken. And the dream here is, oh, you're down to one prize remaining, opponent. Reset stamp to one, hit for 270 until you win the game. Double will be the author of some lovely comebacks. And I do think there is now a little bit of a gap between the 10 we've just seen and the 10 we're about to see. So coming in at number 10, we've got Rillaboom V Max. Now, Rillaboom VMAX is what we've been looking for quite a bit. It is the partner for Rillaboom decks. Rillaboom lets you accelerate two grass energy from your deck to your Pokemon. And Rillaboom VMAX is here to just do a whole bunch of damage. For four energy, it does a natural 130, which isn't great. But you may discard up to three grass energy from it doing an extra 50 for each one discarded, and now you're doing 280, which is KOing all those pesky tag teams, and now it is absolutely great. 
it has seen a lot of play and success in Japan already. I am very nervous that it's weak to fire decks with stuff like Welder. It's going to remain to be seen how good it could end up being, but it could be really good. In at number 8, we've got Toxtricity VMAX, and I'm chucking in Garboda here as well, just because this is by far the best use for Garboda. You see, Garboda's got a lovely ability that automatically poisons your opponent's Pokemon just so long as there is a stadium in play. Doesn't have to be your stadium, just has to be a stadium. And there will be, there always is at the moment. Then Toxtricity V Max comes in for free energy and does 240 damage if the defending Pokemon is poisoned, which they will be because of Garboda. Fun little side note, Toxtricity V does do for free energy 180 if the defending Pokemon is poisoned. And you've got Tapu Koko to accelerate energy. For a short period of time, you've got Thunder Mountain to reduce your attack cost. And this really does look like a powerhouse deck. It has seen a lot of early success over in Japan. But remember, this is legal for tournament play in May. And then we got our rotation just three months later in August. So you are going to lose some of these tricks sooner rather than later. In at number eight, we've got another pair of cards and another quick cheat. Please feel free to be angry and direct that anger towards the comment section. We've got Horror Energy and Speed Energy. Though I'm happy to go on the record and say that Speed Energy is a better of the two. Speed Energy is a lightning energy and unlike some of the old special energy it's always a lightning even if it's on a non-lightning pokemon but when you attach it from your hand to a lightning pokemon you draw two cards that is ridiculous it gives you so much more consistency and every lightning deck that can possibly afford to play it is going to it is so good horror energy is a similar thing but it's psychic and instead of drawing two cards, your opponent takes two damage counters if they attack a Pokemon with Horror Energy attached. Yes, it does stack, so two Horror Energy would be four damage counters taken. The thing is, it is... It's too vulnerable to energy denial. The thing about speed energy is even if your opponent removes it immediately, you've still drawn two cards. Horror energy, you've got to have your opponent attack into it. It's already proven very popular in Dragapult decks. We'll have to wait and see. But honestly, the worst case scenario here is that your opponent plays lots of energy denial just to counter it. That still makes it a very good card. In at number 7, we've got Cinderace V and Cinderace V Max. Now, Cinderace V, I'm actually kind of liking more than a lot of the Pokemon Vs that have V Maxes. Because for free energy, you do 140. And the fact of the matter is that with Welder, getting free energy on is very easy. Not to mention the fact that it also gets free retreat, which is pretty gosh darn handy. Just so long as there is a stadium in play. But as mentioned, there will be a stadium in play. But the real highlight here is Cinderace V Max. Free energy, 170 plus burn. Easy to pay, good damage, love it. But two energy, 30 damage. And if it was damage last turn, you also do that much damage on top of the 30. But unlike the kind of outrage attacks we see on Pokemon like Reshiram and Charizard, you can heal. Reshiram and Charizard, if you heal, you lose the damage. This, you don't. So good. It's proven to be a very good deck already over in Japan, and I only expect that to continue. But it's not the best VMAX in the set. That title, as far as I'm concerned, goes to number six, Dragapult V Max. Now, Dragapult V itself isn't terrible. One Psychic Energy, 30 damage. Will KO stuff like Mew, which do see play. And then two Psychic Energy, you get to do... I mean, you only do 60 damage. But if you were on the bench and became active this turn, that goes up to 140. Not for nothing, but that's the exact amount of damage it takes to get a KO on a Mew to and Mew for free prizes. So, probably something to bear in mind there. But then, as you go up into the V Max here, we've got a lovely attack that does 130 damage and drops 5 damage counters on your opponent's bench Pokemon in any way that you like. 
Yeah, that, that's proven to be very, very nice. There's a million different ways to play this deck. I did actually do a video all about it. You can play it with Giant Bomb for extra damage or the Roxy line for extra damage because when you discard Weezing with Roxy, drop one damage counter on each of your opponent's Pokemon. You can play it with Chinchino for a little bit of energy acceleration and drawing. You can play it with Gengar to heal yourself or move damage off. It's so good, so versatile, the best VMAX in the set. In at number five, we've got Gala Mine. Gala Mine is that new stadium that increases the retreat cost of both active Pokemon by two. It is awesome, and it's going to see a huge amount of play. In any stalling energy denial decks, being able to increase your opponent's retreat cost is great. But then we've got Pokemon like Probopass, that for a single energy, does 10 damage, plus 30 more for each energy in your opponent's active Pokemon's retreat cost. So you use Gala Mine and maybe stuff like the new Absol. I say new, it came out in Team Up, but you know, new-ish. The... Increases the retreat cost of basic Pokemon, and you are on to an absolute winner here. In at number four, we've got Eldegoss V. Eldegoss V is the latest in the line of Pokemon like Shaman and Dedenne, though I have been on the record more than once and said that I do not count it in quite the same league as them. It is a weaker version, but when you play it to the bench, you get to just pick up a supporter card from your discard pile. And that could be something to win the game. It could be a draw supporter to get you rolling again. It's not phenomenal turn one if you don't have supporters in the discard pile. But as soon as you've got one or two supporters that you like in the discard, this becomes awesome. Because remember, you can grab whichever one you like out of the discard pile. And that's kind of redonkulously awesome. You get the choice. And now I think there is another gap, Eldegoss, you could actually put in the top tier here. I've left it just outside, but I think the top three are the top three. And coming in at number three, I'm cheating a little bit. We've got Twin Energy and Capture Energy. They're new colorless special energy. They group naturally. Capture Energy is a single colorless energy, but when you attach it to one of your Pokemon, you get to search for a basic Pokemon and bench it. Great for consistency in any deck. And then Twin Energy is two colorless energy on a non-GX, non-V Pokemon. It is a single prize version of double colorless energy. And I don't think I need to tell you how good double colorless energy was. It was a phenomenal card that helped so many Pokemon. Something like my boy Phalanx that wouldn't be able to attack for one energy now totally can and that is just one example out of potentially millions in at number two we've got scoop up net scoop up net lets you pick up again it's a non-gx non-v pokemon and put it in your hand so something like that galarian zigzagoon we mentioned yeah, just scoop up, net it up, and play it again to drop damage. Something like that Mewtwo we mentioned that puts a supporter card on top of your deck from your discard pile. Use this to reuse Mewtwo over and over again. So you can play one Mewtwo and one Team Yell Grunt. And then those four scoop up net each turn into Team Yell Grunt. That's kind of a little bit silly over the top. Good. It reuses coming into play abilities. It can act as a pseudo switch to get Pokemon out the active. If your opponent doesn't one hit KO a non GX, non V Pokemon, you can then use this to heal them up. There is so much to love about this card, and I expect it to be at the center of numerous ridiculous combo for the entire time it's legal, frankly. But coming in at number one, and I'm afraid it's not even close, it's Boss's Orders. Boss's Orders is going to be one of the best cards, the most plays cards that we see until it rotates out. Except remember, it's not Giovanni, it's Boss's Orders Giovanni, which means that they're probably going to be reprinting this in the future with other villains. So Boss's Orders is going to stay around for years to come, one would imagine. Although to be clear, I don't really usually count reprints on the top 20 lists, which means that Boss's Orders probably won't be eligible next time it comes up.
unless it's been a little while. Tall Scrapper is certainly going to be one of the most impactful cards in the set, but Tall Scrapper is just a reprint of an old card, so I'm not counting it on the list. Feel free to be angry. Now, Boss's Orders, to be fair, is just an alternate named version of Lysander, and it is over the top ridiculously good. It gusts the Pokemon from the bench into the active. It is going to see a huge amount of play and a huge amount of love. Get ready for the gusting, ladies and gentlemen. Boss's Orders is here. So there we go. Those are the top 20 cards from Rebel Clash. Feel free to be angry about some of the groupings and some of the decisions I've made, the order, etc. The place to argue about this is in the comment section. So go nuts, but be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, or you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash wassyplays, where you can find out about a whole bunch of games that don't have Pokemon in, but are pretty gosh darn awesome nonetheless. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.